Hello and welcome to the Kundalini Podcast. That was Zen. This is Dao. I'm Vivek Kovekar. Namaste. This is episode 75. Today I'm going to talk about various steps and implementations of those steps and how that has helped me to completely rid myself of the past, to be in a spiritual mood at all times and to be able to impart some knowledge. Uh, Again, as always, when you take the first stab at any new activity, anything that you start, the initial stages are the ones that are the most um, filled, with, filled with anxiety. And uh, surprisingly enough, even though I have had a previous channel on YouTube, starting again with that uh, zero views, uh, zero subscribers um, counter, is daunting i mean no matter who you are no matter how long you've been making movies or you know whatever when you start again after a long time it's always daunting to see that zero on youtube and uh because it's a new channel so lo and behold i got one comment obviously the first comment had to be something related to spam and so it is the first comment is spam okay this next comment though is exactly why i make these videos and gives me such a pleasure to communicate about this experience with people. And that comment was, hey, I've been looking for you. Where have you been? I've sent you an email. I've been looking for you on social media. How the hell have you been? And I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Someone remembers. Because I did receive a lot of uh, compliments. A lot of people wanted, to, uh, wanted me to resume uh, making these videos. However, for one reason or another, something kept coming up. Uh, as I have told you in the previous couple of videos, I came out west to California, and this is a beautiful Malibu Lagoon where I'm making this video. But making a video, or rather making a trip to California, uh, did not immediately uh, make me, you know, put me in an environment that was uh, good for me to be able to make videos and do things uh, that way. Took a while. Took a few years uh, to even cope with my existence. Because the previous existence where I was, you know, a suburban dad had suddenly been changed to because I decided to, you know, give up the past altogether. Not through completely voluntary means. <laughs> Obviously a divorce is a difficult time. So I decided to move out west leave everything behind and work wonders because it healed me. Healed me completely. But like I said, healing is a process where the creative parts of you get sapped away. If you haven't put in an effort, of course, it's difficult. It's always difficult if you have not put in the effort. But having put in the effort does not prepare you for unforeseen circumstances. That tests your mental fortitude. And that's the best part of the Kundalini process and the things I've been telling you about. A habit of affirmations is first and foremost a habit to be inculcated to even go and do the affirmations. To even pick up the camera, go out, take a picture or two. To make this video. And I just lost a wonderful composition with seagulls flying up there. Beautiful. Well, take in the beauty of some of this, please. Uh, I would like to show you uh, the surroundings and they are beautiful uh, it's a surf mecca it's a tourist place it's also a nature preserve and it's a sanctuary for birds it's a sanctuary for uh, all kinds of wild animals uh, I've been fortunate enough to have this as the backdrop for making some of the best photographs that I've ever made however making photographs uh, and making videos of people surfing or uh, you know birds flying here in the, the lagoon was enough for me it was not quite time to come and make a video like this uh, that was then this is now and so today i decided or whenever i make the first video to take the plunge you know <laughs> let's see if there's people who still want to watch hey second comment thank you really appreciate it so you have spurred me on I won't name the person, uh, but you'll see the comment. And uh, you have spurred me on to make more videos. So thank you very much for that beautiful, 
wonderful compliment and uh, I will try my best to keep making videos. So, what am I going to talk about today? How to implement steps into your life that lead to positive habits. Okay, first of all, don't dwell on the negative too much. A tendency towards complaining brings more of the same, as I've said in previous videos. It requires a vast editing of your life into snippets that are positive. And everything that was negative was feedback. Now, first of all, you have to get out of a routine around toxic people, negative events that keep repeating in your life. First, make that first effort to even realize mindfully what it is meant when we talk about removing toxic habits and putting in positive thoughts or affirmations. For that, you have to make those changes yourself. So affirmations work. And like I said, a complete breakdown of your system to even find out what was lacking or what was something you were not following. Or, oh, this I didn't even know. Does not come unless you change your surroundings, change your circumstances. And mine happen in a drastic way. Thank God for these positive thinking measures, for the mantras, the practice that I had put in. It helped me stay strong throughout an ordeal that I had not prepared for. Helped me come out stronger with my faith intact. In fact, strengthened as a result of going through this experience. But also able to tell people how to do it in a better way. Especially post-COVID because a lot of people are suffering. All of us. We have all gone through something unusual and like I said, wow! As if the Almighty was preparing me for this experience. Hey! <laughs> Everything that has a negative has a positive attached to it. If you start to see it or learn to see it. I think it's called Chi Wei or Chi, well, I'll have to look it up. I was reading a wonderful book by a man named Jared Diamond. He wrote Guns, Germs and Steel. Now he's come out with a new one. I forget the name exactly, but oh, interesting read. Right there in the foreword, he says, uh, this is not on topical matters and what's going on right now in my reality. It's not a magazine. I want this to be read for decades to come. That's some confidence in the man. Of course, Guns, Jump, Steel was a great book. So, uh, if you can find that book, read that concept. I forget the exact Chinese words, but it means from something good comes something better. Like something that you think is, ah, uh, why is this coming into my life? Brings out a better uh, outcome in the future. And that comes through crisis. The book is about crisis. It is a description of what happens when crisis happens. And he has made a case study of seven countries. Now, I only got to about page 49 today. Hey, today's World Book Day. Happy Book Day. I've always been a bookworm for a long, long time. And uh, so this book is fascinating because, well, what next, right? When he writes a book like Guns, Guns Germs and Steel, your obvious uh, next thought is, well, the next book by him, what is it going to be about? And he chose a fascinating topic. It's called Upheaval. Okay, that's the name of it. Upheaval, which is a, another name for crisis. He goes into the Greek root of the word crisis. How to deal with crisis better? I guess I found a subject eight minutes into this video about what I'm going to talk about. First, your preparation for an event and every possible eventuality, be prepared, this Boy Scout motto, is what decides how you're gonna be prepared enough. If the mindset is towards being prepared, but the unknown comes at you, and being the unknown throws you off your usual path as it is meant to, what if it's precisely targeted to know your weaknesses and how to overcome them? Well, if you manage to do that, well, that should be the topic of a video, right there. I think everyone should make that. How did I come out at the other end after COVID? And in my case, other crisis thrown in my personal life and come out stronger. What is grit? It helps to have discipline yourself to do something painful every day, like working out. You know, when you're doing the 10th rep of a push-up and everything's shaking and you do the 10th, 11th, 12th, push yourself. That inculcates a habit. Now, this is my personal experience. I don't have to be, you know, 
a well-built muscular person to know that, to have had a discipline in me. It goes through pain. It goes through resilience. It starts becoming a perverse habit of inflicting pain upon yourself. Everyone who has done that knows it. Be it jogging, be it rock climbing, be it whatever. Right? Now, if you choose pain in the good times, like that Kabir Doha that I keep talking about. Sukhme Subiran sab kare, dukhme kare na koi. Or dukhme Subiran sab kare, sukhme kare na koi. Jo dukhme, jo sukhme Subiran kare, to dukh kahe hoi. I keep messing up the words all the time. But point being, if you pray during hardship only, exclusively, <laughs> and not during times of goodness, how will you reap any rewards? You know, in essence, is what Kabir is saying. So, if you haven't spent some time towards the temple of your body and into disciplining it into something that you command, it doesn't command you. That's it. Not who's bigger, not who has more muscles. Do I command my body? And then there is no outside comparison. I don't command other people's bodies. <laughs> my mind can only command my body. In fact, trying to command other people without first knowing your own self better <laughs> would be foolhardy. You're not ready. That's another thing I've learned. Unless you are in completely complete control of your body, mind, emotions. See, that's how. If you regulated your intake of food, but again, not gone crazy. Now the mind comes into the picture. Not being scared by every paranoid idea that comes along. The resilience has to up, be applied as well. Your mind can still fool you. You have resilience. But a certain weakness, a certain chink in your armor will cause you to be thrown off balance. To not have any idea about what you're about to say. But having the patience, suffering fools sometimes, because you have to, and carrying on as you were. That's what resilience teaches you. Otherwise, idiots abound. You have to ignore them sometimes. There was a guy who tried to <laughs> get under my skin. See? Demonstration. Resilience. People are mischievous. They'll try to throw you off balance. Then not get caught on camera. And act like nothing happened. And are extremely surprised when they get called out. Right, that's what happens when uh, you're taping in a public park. Anyway, resilience with a demonstration. Resilience comes from knowing how to handle every situation and every curveball that's thrown at you. See, my specialty is I can actually make a video out of anything that's going on in my life. My daughter comes in and people commented on how wonderfully I handled that situation. Now, look at how amazingly I've handled this situation. And I'm going to post this video. And it's going to have a funny incident in it. And I didn't lose my cool for half a second. But I dealt with the person and the situation as I had to. So proud of making this one. Peace, love, blessings. Be well.